Got a new uh, antenna project underway. This one was inspired by a local. Uh, one of my locals, uh, old 226 Larry. He has a uh, Moonraker 4 and his reflector fell off. Well, he's 75 miles away from me, straight line, and gives me a 7 dB signal. When that reflector fell off, that signal did not change. So I got to thinking, how about a Yagi with no back door? Well, basically that's what the Moonraker is. It's a, a vertical and a horizontal Yagi on the same boom. But this one's gonna be horizontal only and three elements. I'm trying something new this time. I ordered one of these from, what is that, Triple S Solution. You can uh, find, they've got a ton of different sizes. Uh, the, I found them on eBay. Uh, not that cheap, but <laughs> it seems like it's a, a really nice setup and uh, will be a lot longer lasting than the plexiglass that I usually use. This time I'm using a, uh, a single angle aluminum boom. Uh, it's what I had. It's what I could get my hands on really cheap. So, <laughs> it's just a temporary, it's not a temporary, it's a test antenna. It's an experiment. I just want to see how well this works. And as you can see, I'm reusing a bunch of Mako parts. Was, uh, what do they call that? Is that the saddle? No, that's not the saddle. That's a strap that holds the element. But instead of having it U-bolted to a round boom, I've got it just direct bolted to the, the angle aluminum. I added a, a second piece of angle so that the boom is wide enough to be able to bolt everything onto it. And same thing over here. Added an extra. As you can see through those holes, the boom doesn't quite go all the way through. But it goes far enough. Tons of bolts. He tons of bolts. <laughs> Alright, I gotta put tick get to putting those elements on I got to put the elements on first and then assemble this on my mast uh, but I won't be able to reach that one if I put it on the mast first so I'm gonna get to uh, measuring those out and setting them up I got my measurements of how far they stick out of the ends of these for each one for the the dipole the first director and the second director. All right, I'm gonna put those on and uh, I'll bring you back before I stand this up. Now for the coax connector, all I'm gonna do is sandwich the wires from my coax right in between the clamp and the pipe. I tin the wires so that I don't have any copper touching aluminum. And I'm just gonna sandwich those in there. All right, let me get to that and I'll bring you back when it's done. Alright, I got the coax connected to the dipole part. I told you. Just sandwiched in there. And just lightly connected to my mast. I'm gonna stand this thing up. Shouldn't be too bad. The antenna only weighs oh maybe 15 pounds with that little support brace on the top there on the boom. 15, 16 pounds, so it's not bad. But the sun isn't in our face. Well, it's still kind of in my face on the side, but <laughs> the coax is all connected down there. I guess I don't get my little loop here to, for turning. And it's secured in a couple of places to the mast. Now I just gotta stand it up. Shouldn't be that bad. It's probably, oh, maybe 14 feet in the air well it will be when it's standing up <laughs> all right <laughs> if you can tell i'm trying to avoid that part
it's got a good 1.25 to 1 and 40 ohms of resistance on channel 38 and it has go the other side and it has again, uh, 50 ohms of resistance and flat 1.2 on channel 55 so that means the antenna is a little too short we're gonna drop it down a little try to get that tuned closer to better well try and make it a little better on channel 38 they usually float around what between 55 and 35 mm -hmm. channels anyway Okay, so if you want the SWR to go down, do you pull it in or take it out? Now that depends. If you're, we'll go to the 40 channel CB channels. If your SWR is better on channel 1 than it is on channel 40, you need to make the antenna a little shorter. If your SWR is better on channel 40 than it is on channel 1, then you need to make the antenna longer to get into the middle, get it tuned in the middle area. Okay. So this was tuned high. So I'm lengthening it a little bit to tune it a little bit better on lower frequencies. Okay. And now I'm going around this way. Up there. It wasn't that bad. I don't know, 14, 15 feet up in the air. Enough to tune it. We only really need to be a quarter of a wave up in the air, nine feet. We're over that. Now let's go check what the SWR is on this beauty. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? I know it's going to be wiggly on a windy day. Look, we can see this element closest to us is bouncing a little. Being that angled boom, I know it's going to have twist. But I'm not concerned with it. This is the highest I'm ever going to run this antenna. It's about 14, 15 feet in the air. After one adjustment, look at that. On channel 38. 1.08 for the SWR and 45 ohms of resistance. I'll take it. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Close enough. I only had to adjust the antenna one time. CQCQ CQ, 151 South Carolina. Standing by. 151 South Carolina. Unit 31 Scotland. Over. 3-1 Scotland. Good afternoon to you. Hey, good to reach Scotland. I'm on a brand new antenna today. Good afternoon to you, 3-1. Ah, working well there, my friend. You come in 5 and 7, 5 and 8 into the city of Glasgow, the first one in and form, over. I copied most of that. Uh, I got the uh, the 5 and 8, and you're doing the same over here. I got some uh, other noise on the channel that covered up your name. Uh, if you could try that one more time. You got John over here. Okay, my friend. Yeah, the first name is Tom Tango Oscar Mike, and your new antenna is working fantastic. What kind of antennas did you put up, Roger? Well, thank you very much, Tom. It's a uh, it's a three element Yagi, but it's all forward. There's no uh, no back door on it. It's a uh, a dipole with two directors in front of it. So I'll get to shoot in two directions and stronger in one. Copy all of that, Tom. Thank you so much. Hey, have yourself a, a fantastic weekend, and uh, thank you so much for the uh, the radio report on that new antenna. Tom, have yourself a great one. You got 151 Moa Junkie here in South Carolina. I'll say 73s. Okay, QQFK, Carolina. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the antenna. Enjoy the weather. Thank you. Go ahead, QSK. Junkie out there. Alright, try that one more time. We may have double keyed there. How about that 151 motor junkie out there? Come on back, you got me. Sounds good there, my friend. Watch your videos all the time. They're very informative. Uh, we love the fact that you're doing a lot of homebrew antennas there, but uh, how's 
beautiful weather there this morning in South Carolina. Oh, we got gorgeous weather today. It's going to be a hot one. We're supposed to be up in the mid-80s today, but oh, it's just, it's beautiful out there. I'm going to be heading back out there very soon. And hey, I appreciate that uh, watching the videos, and you're going to be on one. I'm doing a uh, just a little skip clip to put at the end of a uh, an antenna build video. from the north woods of Wisconsin here, hollering at you there. But, uh, yeah, I tell you what, you got some good stuff out there, man. It's, uh, it's great for guys that want to get into the hobby and uh, don't have a, a plethora of money laying around there. It's always informative to watch these. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Rick. Uh, I, when you just said uh, Wisconsin, you damn near knocked me out of my chair because uh, I'm pointing at England. Oh, I'm a good uh, 70 degrees off of your location, and uh, you are just uh, boom, booming in here. Good, good 9 dB on you, even not pointing at you. Yeah, we got a little horsepower in the air here. That's probably why the Omni is pretty much puking it out in all directions there. But, uh, yeah, beautiful morning. 32 degrees up here in the north woods of Wisconsin. Gorgeous day, no wind. Perfect day for some tower maintenance. But uh, I just popped up on 425 here, and I heard that voice, and I said, that's got to be 151 mower junkie before you even said that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You said 32 degrees there? What's your high going to be today? Uh, they're saying about 53 degrees, 53 or 54 degrees, and no wind. So that is a gift up here in the north woods of Wisconsin. We've usually got 30-mile-an-hour uh, headwinds here this time of the year. So 50 degrees is perfect for me, and when there's no wind, that's even better. Oh, I don't know how you can take it. I moved down here to South Carolina from Massachusetts because I couldn't take the cold anymore. The winter time is just, oh, it's too rough. <laughs> you know what, my friend? We don't mind the winter too bad until it dips below zero. Those 32, 33 degree below zero mornings, that I, I don't even start the car. We don't even bother leaving the house. That's what you got to do. But uh, those are the days that all but break us there, copy. <laughs> Copy that. Put on some warm clothes and uh, bundle up tight and uh, just stay warm this winter. Hey, uh, Rick, it's been so nice talking to you. I'm going to uh, let you go and I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for the uh, radio report and the QSO. Hey, 73s to you. 73s there, man. Continue the videos. We all love them. But have a great day and enjoy. Well, that was a pretty good contact, wasn't it? I'm not even pointing at Wisconsin. <laughs> that antenna right now is pointing, oh, maybe the, to England, oh, maybe towards, like, Maine. All right, well, I guess that's it. That's, uh, with the antennas in the air, it's tuned fantastic, and uh, it's working well, too. All right, guys, I'll catch you next time.